Hey guys, this is going to be another video. Um, I'm just going to be showing some magic cards that I got recently. Um, I'm trying to focus here mainly on sort of different card frames that they've done over the years. I, I got some different ones I wanted to show off. I think the uh, some of the factors of the printing and whatnot. Uh, there's some interesting stories in there. So, first of all, I wanted to show one of the uh, Eldrazi Devoid frames that I mentioned last time. You can see how the uh, the artwork is actually on the whole card. The uh, text box is uh, semi-transparent. Up at the top, you've got this really neat looking uh, kind of ancient carving um, pattern. That's the color that you actually have to uh, spend for the card. In, in most ways, what color the card is, but it's technically not having a doesn't have a color but obviously you can't put this in a deck that doesn't have some kind of blue mana um and then this is one of the um augment cards i wanted to show um so last time i showed this uh crafty octopus it uh when you play it you assemble a contraption. I think I explained contraptions last time. So this is a host creature, and uh, when you get the augment, you play that for um, four mana, and then this bar here lines up on top of the octopus, and so it becomes a steam-powered octopus. And so now you can pay five mana to build a contraption anytime and it also gets four extra toughness so it becomes a one seven so that's how that works i think that's pretty cool let's see squirrel dealer i really like the uh artwork on this card that's why i got it um just a just a raccoon selling squirrels out of a trench coat. It's like, hey buddy, you wanna buy a ghost? All the squirrels, some of them are like upside down in there. And... Yeah, see that the sheen on the fur? The, jet, the glint in the eyes? Top quality. These are the real deal. I like that. <clears throat> Again, I, I wish, I don't know, Magic, Magic the Gathering is kinda just like generically cool a lot of times. Like it's kind of playing into what's pot. I don't know. I feel it's like kind of, kind of like 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 Overwatch or something. It's kind of like playing into like what mo the most people are gonna think is this kind of cool or I don't know how better to explain it. But uh, I like when they do kind of like funny goofy stuff like this. I, I like that a lot better personally. Cool is okay too, but. I like Squirrel Dealer. Here's another one of these Devoid cards. It's a multicolored one, so it's got a yellow or, or gold colored thing at the top. I really like card frames that have kind of multiple colors in them. This one is blue and green. It doesn't have, normally the uh, text box would be half green, half blue. I, I like that a little better on the ones that don't have the Devoid, but it's, it, it still looks nice. I think my favorite Devoid frames are the blue ones which I showed earlier. Colonian Tusker is just a regular frame. This is the uh, modern card frame from before Magic 15. This is as you can see Magic 14. Um, it's 3-3 three, three for 2 mana. Normally you don't get bigger than a 2-2 two, two for 2 mana. I like I like cards like that. that this are just really simple but I just uh, bigger than you would normally get for that value, like uh, Kisamaru, or uh, uh, what's the other one? The uh, le uh, Leatherback Baloth, I think, the three mana, four, five. Usually green gets this, but other, other colors do too. Mockery of Nature. So this was in uh, Eldritch Moon. They had these kind of... Uh, like Lovecraft, uh, what should I call it? A Dunwich Horror type of uh, creatures or Cthulhu. 
monsters. So this is a some animal that got corrupted into an Eldrazi and which is their kind of their take on Cthulhu elder gods in magic. Um it's pretty cool. Um Grizzled Angler is one of the uh, double-faced cards which they started doing around like 2009 or something. It was the Innistrad set. I can't remember when that first came out. Um, and so you flip it over and there's this on the back. Now they actually got the idea for this from their other card game which failed in the US but still exists in Japan ironically because it's still an American product. But um card that uh, flips over, transforms, and has something on the back instead of just the standard uh, magic card back. I love stuff like this. I want them to keep making more and more stuff. Duel Masters did this thing where they, they made a card that's actually like three cards physically attached together and it folds up like a like a birthday card or something and there, there's three different transformations. I, I, I haven't been able to get my hands on one of those um, couldn't find a online vendor that would uh, ship to the U.S. Unfortunately, but I, I, uh, it's the three D dragon something. It's three three different front. Anyway, if someone knows how to get those, let me know. Abundant Ma, another one of these emerge cards. Um, some of the emerge cards were really strong. Um. This one I don't think was really used competitively, as far as I know. Uh, here's a token, elemental token. Um, this one, sometimes the tokens usually, like this one I think was, that symbol was printed in a, uh, like a prepackaged deck product, and so it wasn't as, normally if it comes in a booster pack, it'll have an advertisement on the back. It's kind of cool cool to have the uh, actual magic back. Although what happens if you put that in your deck on accident? Um, what? Oh, that's, how'd this get here? Um, this isn't a magic card. This is Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I don't know. He's an angry panda. Actually, um, this card I got because I, I, I didn't realize I wanted the Japanese artwork, which I guess is actually different, but you've got in the background like a mama panda and a baby panda in the background all afraid. He's like a, he's supposed to be like some domestic abuse panda. It's pretty, pretty dark, <laughs> but uh, for a kid's game, but uh, I like his face. So angry. Someone told me it looks like the it clown. Alright, Golgari Charm. This is just one of the charm cards. This is before, now they do templating on these uh, cards where you can choose one, where they have uh, bullet points. So the, a charm is a card that has three different options, and you can choose one. Um, you know, there's also commands, which have four options, and you can choose two, um, <clears throat> like cryptic command. And so this is before they started doing that. It definitely looks, it's definitely easier to... Uh, read when you uh, have those bullet points. Sparksmith, um, just an older goblin card. It's, it was uh, pretty good when it was new. Uh, come in a speaker. I like cards like that. This one, it becomes a 2-2 two -two for one mana if you have another Merfolk or an island. Uh, I don't know, I got pretty simple, but it's bigger than the uh, Mana you spent to cast it if you meet a certain condition. I I enjoy cards like that. Here's an advertisement. Um, those guys look way too excited for that website. Which yeah. Anyway, dinosaur token for uh, the recent set Ixalan. They started uh, actually giving creatures a type dinosaur before they had just called it lizard I guess to be more kind of fantasy like like someone in the middle ages wouldn't know a dinosaur was a separate thing from a lizard I don't know 
now they're doing actual dinosaurs. And they gave them feathers in this uh, recent edition. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, this I wanted to show next is a uh, Aftermath card. So what they've done before is split cards where um, you'll have basically two like this. Um, and it's basically a right side and a left side half. And you can cast either one from your hand. And then they did this uh, Egypt theme where they... they Wanted to have graveyard mechanics, of course, because it's Egypt, um, you know, pyramids, mummies, all that. Um, so they did something weird. Now, these didn't uh, end up being too well received um, in terms of the visual design, but I, I really, I hope that doesn't discourage them from trying more kind of weird stuff like this, because how this works is basically the horizontal one you can cast from your hand, and then this is arranged differently to tell you that you only can cast it from your graveyard later on and so you, you basically get two cards worth out of one card and I uh, again it looks weird it's wonky but I, I absolutely love stuff like that and I, I really want them to keep trying the uh, red with blue looks really nice in my opinion it's a holographic lotless troll um, nothing super special out of the frame. You can see what they started doing, I think, with uh, uh, Ravnica, the original Ravnica. Um, it's for these, uh, the gold, the multicolored cards. If they're two color, you have a, you'll have kind of um, outlines of the two different colors and a text box also, if you can see that they're black and green for the uh, black and green that this is colored um for cards that are three colors or more they don't do that and i, I kind of wish they would i think it would look yeah i've seen some like fan uh mock-ups where it's like a three like a white blue green card and there's like three different bands of color on there i think that looks nicer than than what they currently do with three three or more colored cards even if it doesn't it does look a little noisy maybe but I still think it looks better than just the, the flat gold that they do. Yeah, so I prefer two colored cards over three colored ones. Two colored cards are my favorite. <clears throat> also, you can play them in more different decks than three color. Savage Summoning. Um, some of these I just got so I would get free shipping. Uh, Burning Sun's Avatar, one of the new dinosaurs. Dinosaur Avatar. The first airbender? I don't know. Okay, here's another double face card. This is a Ulrich of the Crawling Horde, legendary werewolf. Um, and he turns into a werewolf with uh, some uh, sick white locks. Uh, funny story about this card is. Uh, so, Lord is a term in magic, which means a creature that um, direct, like explicitly calls out a certain creature type and benefits it. For example, um, if it says your goblins get plus one attack and or uh, power and toughness, uh, that would be a Lord. And then a legendary creature is a legendary creature. It's uh, as it's printed, it's a um, like some specific character or whatever instead of some generic thing like uh, a avatar. I guess there's multiple of these um, dinosaurs. <clears throat> but the... So the thing is, they, they, they made werewolves in Innistrad. They went over it really well. They'd done a few werewolves before, but um, these ones had the transformation thing that really you know felt like a werewolf. Um, and so there was a there was one werewolf lord, Immerwolf, which uh, um, wasn't legendary and wasn't itself a werewolf, but it did power up your werewolves. Um, but people wanted, there's a type of play called Commander where you have basically a deck of 100 cards. You can only have one of each, and then you pick one legendary creature to be the uh, 
um, Commander Ed Elder Dragon Highlander is also is the original name. Um, and so you pick one legendary creature to be the uh, leader of your deck and you can play it at any time if you have the mana. And so people wanted some a legendary werewolf that could uh, be that for a werewolf deck. So they made this guy and this does work well with werewolves, but people got upset, I guess, because it doesn't specifically call out the werewolf type anywhere. Uh, well, it kind of it does non werewolf, but not in a not in a way that boosts your other werewolves, and so people are all disappointed that this guy didn't boost your other werewolves. So it's like, well, you kind of I don't know, guys. It's uh, I don't know. People get really specific and demanding sometimes. I kind of feel like I don't know. Feedback is good, but people are also obnoxious. I don't know. Okay. Storm the Vault. This is um, another transform card. Um, it's from the new Ixalan set. And I like these because on the back they made a new type of card frame. So um, these are all cards which transform into lands when you meet a certain condition. It's supposed to represent like exploring and finding a secret place or whatever. It's like, you know, pirate treasure stuff. So um, it turns into this. I don't, uh, it's really cool. It's like a treasure map um so that, that was a brand new thing i like how it looks and uh again i always want to see them do more stuff like that long tusk cub an energy card that's the energy symbol it's kind of an alternative resource to mana that they recently added to the game just for a couple sets it's not something that's going to be around all the time um so basically it's it's pretty much like mana, except it uh, there's no colors of it, and it accumulates over turns, so you can save it up between turns. Without that, also means there aren't so many cards that uh, can just give you more every turn. It's more like you know when you play this or when this deals damage, you get two. I think this card is was, is pretty strong in some competitive deck right now. But I don't I'm, I don't follow that much. Walk the plank. Um, just a pretty low-hanging fruit for um, a pirate theme. Um, charging Monstrous or I just wanted some copies of that because it's a pretty strong uh, creature that can attack the turn you play it. Um, hard to deal with. Wastes. This is one of the uh, um, full art land cards. Um, that doesn't go all the way to the edge. This is what they usually do. Um, in Zendikar, that was the uh, set originally that had a um, theme about lands. Like you had to um, plan out when you're gonna play your land because you got special bonuses. Um, that was. This is what this uh, style is from, and uh, they 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 did some full art lands before that in one of the uh, parody sets, and they're so popular they had to they bring it back every once in a while. Um, and they're pretty open about stating that they don't do them in every set because they want to use it as a way to get people excited and buy more packs. So at least they're open about it, but that's just kind of the soulless reality of business sometimes, I guess. Um, I had a few copies of these. Wastes, by the way, are the basic land... Uh, which make colorless mana because in the set that they came out in there were cards which um, had mana costs that you had to pay with colorless mana it couldn't it couldn't be a color so you couldn't tap your island to pay for it for example and so they they started using this symbol to represent mana mana that has to be colorless and they s still use the, the the number in the circle and that means that still means it can be paid with anything. All right, banishing stroke. This is a miracle card. Um, miracle is a thing where when you draw it, the card you can reveal it and play it for a much cheaper cost. You can play this for only one. You can put um, something on the bottom of the deck, which is 
really good, especially for one mana. Um, so it's got kind of like these uh, beams of light coming out of it, like holy intervention, whatever. Um, that also helps you recognize it when you do draw it, because once you put it in your hand and like mix it all up, then you can't prove that you just drew it anymore. So they want people to be alerted to that so they can actually make the decision. Here's an example of a red one. Okay. Another uh, Devoid card. This is uh, blue and red. When I first started Magic, blue and red and blue-green were my favorite pairs of colors. Just because of how they looked visually. Like the like the blue and green cards were pretty to me. So I kind of... I, I actually... Play and wise, I kind of like green and black, I think, but anyway. There's another uh, green and blue um, aftermath card. Uh, the, the names are all kind of play on words, spring to mind. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I just, just love that green and blue, so pretty. Another one. Oh, okay, now this is the real deal. Necrotog. This is a Atog. A Atog. Atog. It's an older type of creature they don't make anymore. It's an original to magic. It's a anagram of goat because they eat everything. This one eats um, cards in your graveyard and gets bigger. I really like the visual design on these guys. Here's another Atog card. This is my favorite one, Chronotog, although I, Chronotog Totem is a statue that turns into Chronotog. So I love how that one looks. And I wish they'd make more creatures that looked like that. They don't really do the goofy stuff anymore, Fantatog. Big bulbous eyes, I love that. Um, they did Gremlins recently, which were kind of kind of like that I guess but they didn't, they didn't make very many of them I kind of I I don't know I just wish they wouldn't be so serious all the time werebear he exercises his right to bear arms I wonder if they'd uh, do that joke nowadays or not not that it's like ah, like offensive or anything but it might just be something they don't want to you know get people uh, irritated about, I don't know. This looks like a normal red card, but it's a little different. This, this is uh, from Planar Chaos, and Planar Chaos, let me find a regular red card to compare. There we go. So Planar Chaos had these cards that were uh, it was a, an old card, but then switched to a different color, as if it was, like, what if that card had been printed in an alternate reality? Um, so I forget what this one was. Looks like maybe... Yeah, I don't know what... It, it could have been white, maybe. I don't know. Um, but so, yeah, they, uh, made these cards, like, what if it was in a different color and had a different name and stuff? Um, and so they they gave it a whole new uh, kind of pattern on the card frame, and I really I really like how they look, especially the um, oh the the black ones are a little drab, but like even even the white ones look pretty cool. Um, so here, here's a regular red one. It's kind of like I don't know. I guess it's supposed to be kind of like uh, like flames or explosion or whatever. And this looks more like cracked pottery or something. Um, just a different take on what a red card could be. You've got these, uh, darker kind of bars for the, uh, creature type and the, uh, name. And, uh, I think it looks really good. I, uh, kind of prefer them over the, uh, normal ones, but maybe that's just because they're less plentiful and therefore more special. But, uh, yeah, I really like that. And then, uh... Last thing I wanted to show is, um, <clears throat> which one do I show first? Graph Rats. It's a, uh, 
2-1 for 2 mana. It's pretty good. I'm just messing. It's, uh, this is a meld card. So they made three pairs of these in Eldritch Moon, and it, this is really cool. Um, basically, they use the transform card technology where there's uh, two sides on each card, but uh, flip over this one. What the heck? It's just half a big card. What's going on? So what you do is you get these both in play, and then you're able to uh, flip them over at the same time and bring them back as this. Let me, I'm gonna have to uh, hold this. Chittering host. Sorry for the shake, it's a little, uh... yeah. So this is um, one of the coolest things they've done with cards in my opinion. Uh, I realize it's a little clunky if you, uh, like, play a lot, and it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, turn it sideways together all the time. Not really. It's it's not that bad. Anyway, this is a really awesome idea for mechanic, but um, people apparently don't like it that, this, that much, um, and that makes me really sad, because... This is one of the coolest things you can do in a card game, in my opinion. You can make this stuff all fit together. I just think that's really cool. I'm also curious, because the, uh, I talked before about how, for just recently, they, they had started making cards that print all the way to the edge and not have that bar, but these, these print all the way to the edge, and so I'm wondering, do they maybe not line up perfectly, or is there something about printing on because it only goes up to one edge maybe that was something they could do I also it's not that the technology was not available for printing all the way to the edge it's just that in the amount that magic produces they have to uh, work with a lot of different printing companies and it, it was not a universal technology or not as prevalent up until this point I guess because I've seen other card games that have cards that go all the way to the edge without any order border excuse me and uh, the cards are older than um, stuff like the unstable stuff I showed last time anyway uh, that's all um, if wizard is watching this I would ask you to please uh, make more of these meld cards and don't listen to the people who uh, don't like to be excited. Thank you. Goodbye.